Howdy YouTube. Uh, I see a lot of people on uh, YouTube making all these handy dandy little paracord bracelets and uh, different things. Well I got thinking, I started looking on YouTube and there's not a whole lot of videos on what you can actually do with paracord. Everybody says we well, need paracord to, you know, for survival. And uh, I, I don't disagree with that at all. Uh, and I strap on different things that I'll carry in my kits like this is my standard M9 bayonet uh, it's the knife that you, you know that comes with the the bayonet for the M16 or the AR15 uh, which is one of my primary knives I carry on my my pack my kit bug out bag whatever you want to call it you know and I have there's actually right here on this knife sheath I don't know, probably 40 feet, nah, probably not that much, probably 30 feet of paracord, <coughs> excuse me, you know, I have this little X wrap on top that I can get to the back here, and, uh, and I pull that off real quick, and that makes a, you know, like a good leg tie, if I needed it to, to tie it, you know, tie it off to my leg if I was wearing it on my hip, uh, it's also some little quick lengths of rope I get if I need, you know, a short little quick length of rope or whatever. And everybody knows what you can do with rope. I mean, you can do all the stuff you need in survival. Uh, tie, you know, make shelters, lash rope together and all that stuff. Uh, on uh, this knife, this is a knife, I, you know, that I would wear on my hip in the woods. It's a good little you know, saw back, heavy blade. I can, you know, I can hit this with something, you know, with a rock or something to split firewood or whatever I need to do but uh, I keep it tethered to the sheath because it would obviously be on my hip I can quickly remove the you know the tether via the lanyard you know if I need to take the knife away from what I'm doing uh, but this little lanyard I built here is again 10 15 20 feet of rope and I don't remember how much goes into each of these uh, I sat down at one point and I built a uh, a sling for uh, for a Mosin. Uh, the amount of cord that's actually in this rifle sling is kind of amazing, really. Uh, now I did it in sections. There's two pieces of cord that run the whole length of this. Uh, <coughs> that is wrapped one time with this layer here uh, working from the out inside out I have you know the length of cord that's my ultimate strap that'll never go away uh, then I wrap the entire length with this I don't know what they call it a cobra stitch or some you know there's some name for it I, th I believe it's cobra stitch uh, and I'm not going to get into the videos on how to make this. There's a million of them on YouTube. You can make bracelets and keychains and key fob holders and all that. But what I did at the upper side of this and uh, is after I made my first wrap, I made a second wrap. Uh, then I made a third wrap, and I believe there's a fourth on here, and they're all separate pieces of cord. So as I need cord, I can pull one of these wraps off. Yeah, I mean, I built this strap part up here, the thicker strap, to increase, uh, you know, comfortable in carrying it, but ultimately in a survival situation, I, I believe there's better part of 100, 150 feet of cord in this strap, uh, which is great. So I have 150 feet of cord to, you know, tie stuff down. But that's not all you can do with it, you know, for a survival situation. Incidentally, the uh, the Mosin got is. A phenomenal weapon in the fact that it's very accurate it's very reliable the mechanics are on it are very simple uh, ammunition is cheap you can buy these ammo can sardine can looking things of ammunition for these critters for like 80 bucks for 550 rounds it's as cheap as it gets uh, the guns are cheap themselves you can find them at gun shows for 80 90 100 dollars uh, somewhere in there if you're trying to, I mean, it's a good hunting rifle. It's a it's a fairly decent battle rifle. I mean, it it sure beats nothing in a gunfight. Uh, 
essentially, I mean, 7.62 caliber, it's comparable to the 308 in ballistics. Uh, great gun, but we're not here to talk about the gun. Uh, but some of the things you can do with paracord, and I just got a little piece of paracord here, uh, that a lot of people don't realize and don't think about is one of the things you can do is eat, paracord makes a phenomenal bandage. You know, you cut yourself on your hand, your finger, or whatever. You can make a quick little loop. Let's say I got a cut right up here up the length of my finger. You make yourself a quick little loop. Wrap the paracord around your your cut. I guess my, my piece of paracord ain't long enough. Might as well too long. Yeah. But you uh, and this is black. You can get green, purple, red, orange. There's so many colors of paracord now. When I was in the service, you know, Ranger cord we had green, uh, and I've got a bunch of green. But you make yourself a little loop at the top of your cut. Uh, you wrap around your cut a few times. Uh, the soaking quality or the the quality of the cord for absorbing blood flow is pretty impressive. Yeah, you'll never know until you actually try it. Get a little piece of paracord next time you cut yourself. Wrap it first like this. And when you're making a bandage out of paracord, you don't want to uh, you don't want to pull it super super tight. I mean, you need to have pressure, and you want to stop the blood flow. But if you cut off circulation, that's not a good thing either. But once you get your desired length over your cut, however bad it is, you just run this in through here. Uh, pull on the back side of your knot and you know you can cinch it off that way uh, excellent field expedient bandage when you've got nothing else it really helped keep uh, you know infection from starting uh, one of the things I carry in my med kit in my pack is I always carry a lot of antibiotic cream and I don't usually use antibiotic cream out in the real world but out in the field you need to do everything you can to prevent infection because you're not going to have the ability of a doctor or whatever to come around. Uh, and infection's a serious problem in the woods. Uh, there's not a whole lot of sterile environments. But okay, so you can you know you can fix a cut. Big deal. What else can you do? Piece of cord here. Inside 550 cord, you have seven. If it's real 550 cord. Uh, in some of these little aftermarket whatevers I've seen that are trying to rip off paracord, they're not. You'll know you have true paracord if you've got seven strands uh, inside it. So inside your paracord, you have seven individual little ropes. Well, okay, what's that have to do with anything? Cut the other end off and pull these out of here for you. Each one of these individual ropes inside your uh, paracord is 35 pound test so now we have seven little individual strands of rope now if this rope was 20 feet long I'd now have seven 20 foot long pieces of individual cord uh, thir at 35 pound test okay that's lovely now what do you do if you unravel each of these, you have two individual strands that are approximately 15 pound test. Uh, 15 pound test, and it's, I'm going to tell you, it's completely simple to get these things apart. With 15 pound test cord, as small as this is, you now have, I mean, you could fish with this. I mean, if you're out chasing 30 or 40 pound catfish like we would be here in Oklahoma, I, I would probably use just this one individual strand. Having a hard time getting that apart. I mean, and it's wrapped pretty tight, obviously. Uh, inside, once you get these apart, there we go. Once you get these apart, now, if I have a 20 foot piece of rope, I will now have 14 20 foot pieces of this. 
there's not a whole lot of fishing you can't do with uh, 20 feet of rope. So you go out and you find yourself some field expedient or you brought with you some like milk jugs or anything buoyant. You can make jug lines. Uh, with the jug line, remember which ones I just took apart, I think it's these ones. Uh, Well, you throw a fish hook on this line, tie it off to a jug, or you find a sapling next to the stream or the creek or the lake where you're fishing, and you uh, you can build a simple snare mechanism. Uh, and if you don't know how to make a snare, there's a bunch of videos online how to make a snare, but a snare works for fishing too. If you can find a sapling real close to the edge of the bank, and uh, bend it over and build a snare and then use the trigger of the snare onto the hook end of the rope uh, you can make a self-catching fish system that once you know the fish finally does take a good bite on the line and pull on it the snare will trip your sa uh, trip your sapling and uh, uh, catch, set your hook for you and catch your fish uh, and then you have food and it's an autonomous fishing system in that you don't have to sit there and babysit it so if you go down the river and you set up you know in the course of 50 or 60 or 100 yards or however you, far you do you set up you know even if you just use one line you set up seven of these over the course of 100 yards you've increased your survivability in getting food seven times uh, ups your averages ups your law of averages in catching a fish uh, if you split each of those lines again <coughs> or cut them down from your 20 foot mark and you put 14 out there it, it, it's just really drastically increasing your odds of getting food uh, you know there's a lot of guys that make videos on creating deadfalls and snares and they carry snare wire with them uh, I don't know of a whole lot of places short of a desert environment that don't have a stream running through it <coughs> with fish running through it. You know, fish is one of them foods you can eat raw if you need to. I don't like raw fish. Uh, not real impressed with it. However, I would do it in a survival situation. Uh, even if you can't get to where you can make fire or wherever, if nothing else, if you can catch a piece of fish, or if you can catch a fish, you have a sustainable food source. Uh, you know, hooks are great because they're reusable. Uh, you can find just you can find all kinds of things in nature. Say you want to make this float, you don't want to run, you know run it off the on the bottom. You can easily get yourself a little twig, uh, something that's going to hold the weight of your hook and your uh, your bait. Tie a twig on your line, and when you throw it out there, it'll you know hold it buoyant up off the bottom. So if you're fishing in a you know a lake and the you know you can see the fish run the top of the water and not the bottom of the water you know put a little twig on there make yourself a little bobber uh, flotation device to hold it up uh, unfortunately and unfortunately across the United States there's trash dumps and I mean there's just all kinds of garbage out there uh, you know and I suggest and a lot of people don't realize but you know in a end of the world situation or shit hits the fan or whatever you know, there's people go out and ravage through uh, dump sites, you know, major dump sites, all the time looking, you know, the trash and treasure thing. One man's trash is another man's treasure. Uh, figure out where your local dumps are, I mean, wherever you intend to be surviving. Uh, maybe you're not surviving out in the wilderness. Maybe you're going to be surviving in a, in a row or a semi row or an urban environment. You know, figure out where those trash dumps are because that's going to be one of the last things people think of as far as a place to go forage for whatever you know if you can go into a trash dump I'm reasonably sure in a short period of time if you can get over the smell you can find 15 or 20 empty milk jugs or bleach jugs running around and you can gather up those bleach jugs and now you have you know an excellent system for setting up a uh, you know a jug line that you can throw in your creek uh, tether it down to where it doesn't float off too far uh, and set up a fish catching concept. You can also take your main li main line uh, that you pulled your wires out of if you needed to. Say you've got a little, you know, 30, 25, 30 foot stream, uh, and you've pulled your wire out of your out of the sheathing of the cord of the 550 cord. Uh, another thing you can do is tie it off to each end of the creek. 
uh, and build yourself a, uh, a trot line running across the green down from here you would in several different places connect uh, connect your rope to your trot line if you don't know how to make you know different knots such as the bow line uh, you know sheep shank there's so many knots out there that you need to learn if you haven't already uh, use a bigger piece of cord here uh, if you haven't taken the time to learn you know a bunch of these different knots uh, one of the things you know if you need to make a short pull rope for whatever length of time you know anything you can do to not have to cut this rope until you absolutely have to cut this rope uh, in a survival situation is phenomenal uh, you know you can make a quick little not that it will shorten the length of the rope but will not uh, doesn't make it weaker if you tie a knot in a rope you make a weak point where you tie the knot but you know you need to shorten this for a length of time throw a half hitch on one side of the rope half hitch on the other side of the rope uh, pull it up tight and I mean you can make a hundred foot rope five foot long if you need to for a short period of time with just that little couple of half hitches I've made this knot indestructible uh, I mean it's as strong as the rope it's not going to pull loose but once you put slack in it, it pulls right out and you can uh, you know there's just so many slip knots and uh, knots is the one the probably the most important survival skill you'll have uh, you know, if you need to make a pull cord, you know, rescue line, whatever, you, need, you know, the bow line is an un, uh, non-slip knot. You can't make it slip in any way. Uh, Boy Scout 101, I mean, if you can't tie some knots that are going to hold and you know they're going to hold and not slip and, you know, not choke people, uh, the important thing about real knots is they typically don't tighten to the point where you can't get them back apart. Uh, you know, the eventual just sit there and throw half hitches on a line until you think it's secure enough that uh, you believe it's secure enough that you're, you know it's going to hold whatever. You know, you just start tying overhand knots, shoelace knots, whatever you want to call it, in a line over and over and over and over. Well, when you put weight on those, those tighten up. And eventually, I mean, if you've got all day to get these knots apart, sure, you can do it. But, uh, you know, it's kind of, you need to, if you prepare, a chance favors a prepared mind. If you spend a little bit of time preparing and learning some knots, if you don't want to take the time to learn, for, learn some knots, uh, you know, throw a knot guide or knot book in your, uh, in your, in your kit or your bob bag or whatever you want to call it so it gives you some ideas uh, you know the Boy Scout manual the Boy Scout field manual is an excellent book uh, I don't actually have mine here it's over at the other house but there is more information in the Boy Scout book on how to make deadfalls how to make snares how to make you, you name it it's in there uh, great book it's about you know six eight inches tall by four or five inches wide it's probably three inches thick excellent I mean, one of the best survival guides you'll ever find. Uh, it'll have edible plants in different areas. It'll have uh, just massive amounts of information. Uh, so that's kind of, you know, just a couple things you can do with paracord. And, you know, you're only limited by your imagination and the equipment you have with you. Uh, if you do whatever you can... To increase your imagination over the course of you know reading videos on YouTube I mean whatever information is information but the more time you spend increasing your uh, your availability and your survivability in the woods and the things you can do uh, you know I just watched a video and uh, the guy calls himself it's the Pathfinder School LLC I'm sure if you Google or YouTube it you can find them I mean, this guy, phenomenal amount of ideas. Uh, one of the things he puts in his kit is a couple big rat traps. And I intend to, after watching that video, I intend fully intend to get uh, some rat traps for my 
kit. Great way to catch you know ground squirrels, stuff like that. Lightweight, inexpensive, uh, work real well. You know they're designed to kill critters, but uh, you know there's so much can be done with 550 cord other than make bracelets. And I, I see more and more I'm seeing people wearing these 550 cord bracelets, and they're pink and blue and orange and all them different colors, and, that, and that's wonderful. They're stylish. But, you know, paracord really does have a true survival purpose other than decoration or, you know, keeping you from losing your keys. Uh, there's a million different ways to braid it. You know, the braids are cool, but what, you know, in Ranger School what was taught, the whole point of braid, braiding 550 cord was to increase strength and or increase the amount of cord you're carrying for the, uh, the actual load size that's being taken. Uh, as far as you know how much room it takes up or in your kit and that's why the idea is of making lanyards and uh, you know ranger school there it was a guy made an entire backpack out of 550 cord uh, I believe it's in a museum somewhere it's kinda cool but I mean there it's endless amount of possibilities of what you can do with uh, 550 cord and even you know if you just use a little bit of time and a little bit of thought into what you're doing and you know the first thing you have to do in any survival situation is slow down and think about what you're doing uh, because there is a lot of people that uh, you know wouldn't stop to think well I can do this or I can do that I can you know take each piece of these ropes apart and uh, turn it into something worth having uh, each one of these, if you're just making a small piece of shelter and you're, you know, trying to lash wood together, or even a small little raft, uh, you know, anything that's trying to, <clears throat> you know, anything you're trying to do to really, you know, increase your survivability. You know, I started with a little, uh, three, six, nine, ten inch piece of rope here. Uh, which there's not a whole lot you can do with a little 10 inch piece of rope in the real world and I get that uh, but with a little bit of ingenu you know, ingenuity and you know, thought and creativity and a little bit of planning you can take each of these little 10, 10 inch pieces of rope here tie the right knot and uh, I'm not going to sit here and make you watch the video while I do this. I'm just going to do a couple pieces of them. Uh, but if you learn to tie that same bow line, the non-slipping knot, which I just missed, uh, tie a couple of bow lines in these with that little 10 inch piece of rope. Find yourself a a jug or even a stick if you're going to spend the time doing the fishing yourself but uh, I can take these little ten pieces of rope tell me I'm not going to tell you it's simple right, there we go tie those little ten inch pieces of rope together and uh, under in a reasonably short period of time connect yourself up all ten of these and uh, turn your turn your little nine inch pieces of rope connect here's one connect the hook last uh, and you need to know which knots will hold and which knots won't which knots weaken a rope which knots don't uh, take your little pieces of rope here and it does not take long to create yourself a decent fishing line uh, out of a nine inch piece of rope I mean I don't know how much rope you feel you need to fish if you can uh, you know get in the water and get off the bank three or four feet even if you're using a sapling you know if you're using a sapling you can pull it down and snare trip it you know a ten foot piece of rope is uh, phenomenal for uh, you know, solving that it solving that problem uh, you know 
with the right rock knots that aren't going to slip and the right knots that aren't going to break when Mr. Fish gets on there and that's your food that's your life I mean that's what's going to keep you alive uh, if you learn to do this properly and uh, tie all this stuff together you can create yourself a very 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 effective food source uh, and with the snare on a sapling idea you know, it's autonomous you don't have to be there you don't have to sit there and babysit it and wait for your food I mean you can be off foraging for berries or you know looking for grubs or whatever you're willing to eat out in the wilderness uh, you know there's just countless 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 ways that you can feed yourself with just a couple you know a little piece of 550 cord uh, once everything's properly set and properly done you know, you're only limited by your imagination uh, in a desert environment where you don't have the water to fish at you know, the same string makes great you know deadfalls or snare wire uh, you know I carry a little bit of snare wire with me uh, never been a big fan of the snare idea uh, it would beat nothing definitely beat nothing uh, but again being able to take your one nine inch piece of cord and turn it into I mean you couldn't even effectively make one snare out of one 10 inch piece of cord but out of 14 pieces of 10 inch cord you could probably make seven decent snare or uh, I'm sorry not snares deadfalls and probably two to three effective snares but again we have to know how to tie these knots so you're not wasting your time so when the critter gets on there he's got enough strength to pull it loose and uh, go on his way but uh, you know, in just a minute or two while I've been sitting here running on at the mouth I have created a uh, I guess we'll even tie this on here just for the sake of time uh, sheet bend is the knot you tie the I believe is the name of it to connect two dissimilar pieces or two dissimilar sized pieces of cord. But in just a short period of time, I've got a fishing line that is six and a half, seven feet long. Uh, so there's more stuff that you can do with 550 cord than just simply uh, make it look pretty and make a cool little keychain or key fob out of it or whatever uh, you just have to be willing to put a little bit of time into training yourself a little bit of time into you know thinking about it uh, like I said and I've, I've said it a bunch of times and people probably get tired of hearing me saying it chance favors a prepared mind uh, you know I talk to people all the time and that's their big thing now is well I'm preparing for the end of the world or I'm preparing for you know, Armageddon or breakdown in social society or whatever they're prepared for and uh, you know they go out and they buy all this high-tech gear and low-tech gear and all this stuff they're gonna carry but they really haven't put any thought into how they're gonna use it when the time gets there uh, do a little bit of research spend a little bit of time on YouTube uh, there's a bunch of great great guys out there that have I mean there's but there's don't get me wrong there's some hacks that are just you know talking stupid for back, lack of a better word you know I'm gonna take my 550 cord and turn it into a catapult and whatever uh, this stuff is number three on my list of stuff I'm taking if I have to leave uh, first thing I'm gonna take is a good fixed blade knife and for me that is the M9 bayonet uh, you can't break this thing. I've tried. It's got a, uh, and I know I can't run it with the cord on there. That's why this cord moves in sections. But a uh, little wire cutter. I can cut wire, cut just about anything with that. But good fixed blade knife is my first solution to anything. Uh, a uh, guaranteed fire method, and I'm probably going to do a little bit on guaranteed fire method is second you know I can create take this piece of cord make a bow and uh, a stick and 
come up with a way to make fire. It's not very effective, it's not very easy, but I can do it. I can do, the, I know about six, seven different methods of creating fire with nothing. Uh, and that's great, but a quick, sure fire method that doesn't care if it's moist is number two on my survival kit. You know, fire is a great, 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 great tool. Uh, and then a little bit of 550 cord, I can catch myself some food, lash together some sticks, make myself a, you know, a good uh, shelter. I can take the same 550 cord take my knife if I've got a low-end environment find a stick or whatever lash that to the front of a stick and now I got a spear for some spear fishing I mean there's just there's so many things you can do uh, and things you need to learn to do to try and survive uh, it's great that everybody's going out and spending all the money on all this survival gear but they really need to learn to use it and that's going to be the difference between those that survive if something drastic really happens and those that are going to become gear donors. Uh, and there's going to be a lot of gear donors out there. There's going to be a lot of people that, you know, are preparing to get in gunfights and they're preparing for this and they're preparing for that. I am preparing, if I'm going to leave, I'm going to make myself as scarce as possible. I'm going to take my family and I'm going to try as hard as I can to not see another human being until the situation solves itself. Uh, in some way, somehow, the situation will solve, solve itself no matter what it is. Uh, you want to avoid conflict at all costs. You don't want to try and get into it. But there will be a lot of gear donors. There's going to be a bunch of people that went out and spent a ton of money on all this high-end gear. They really can't start a fire without a match or without their little flint and steel or without their, you know, different stuff. You know, they're high-end survival gear and that's all wonderful they have that high-end survival gear but the, you know what the batteries are going to die you're going to run out of the the flint and the steel and you're going to run out of all that stuff if it's any prolonged length of time uh, and you need to know how to do it without any of that stuff uh, you know, I can take my lighter and I can light anything in the world on fire you give me some matches and I can light quite a bit of stuff on fire until they get wet but when you run out of all that, which is eventually going to happen, you can't stockpile enough that you can carry with you that you can take for five or ten years of survival if that's what it comes down to. And uh, that's going to be the difference between who lives and dies. That's going to be the difference who uh, who becomes gear donors and who doesn't. Uh, anyway, take a little bit of time, spend some time on YouTube or reading or wherever you can find it. Uh, there is so many uses for this stuff that I couldn't sit here in five hours and put them all down. Uh, so, uh, thanks for watching. If you thought this video was informative, I'd appreciate a little thumbs up and uh, have a good day.